Uganda will join the rest of the world to celebrate the World Tourism Day, 27th September, under the theme Tourism for Inclusive Growth. Growth, we are really talking about development. This theme underscores the potential of tourism in promoting opportunities for communities around the world, as well as the role that community engagement has in advancing sustainable tourism development. This year's theme is timed to contribute to the debate on tourism's contribution to sustainable development goals, the famous SDGs, which places high priority on local participation in tourism. Rural urban engagement in economic activities in many countries depend on tourism and breathes life in the local communities by distributing the much needed income and social engagement. Some of you who have traveled, I'm sure, to many countries, not only in East Africa, but outside East Africa, at every monument you go to, monument, you will find a lot of people taking your pictures, selling this, selling this veneer. Those are participants in the tourism industry of that country. Those who have been to Rome, recently, there are so many things to buy at that St. Peter's Square, isn't it? So many things, and rosaries, and this, and those are participants in the tourism industry. They are not just there, but they are really participants uh, in the tourism industry, and they are engaged, and they are promoting tourism in their country. Even before the pandemic, the industry grappled with the question of equitable growth as the value of the tourism dollar was not trickling down the pyramid in a fair and proportionate way. The policy direction of the ministry and government is to promote this equitability and contribute to a balanced growth of the community. Tourism can only prosper 
if it engages the local population by contributing to social values such as participation, education, and enhanced local governance. At the same time, there can be no real tourism development in such development damages the values and culture of host countries or if the social economic benefits generated by the tourism sector do not trickle down to the community level. For me, this is really very important. That tourism is not about hotels. It is about the trickling down to rural development. Trickling down to rural development where the rural population participates and gains from tourism. Then that is tourism. With this in perspective, government is implementing several initiatives with host communities aimed at ensuring that mere benefits accrue to them. More benefits, of course, accrue to them. Such initiatives include the handcraft and souvenirs project, which we have in the ministry, whose objectives to target to benefit the youth. Handcraft and souvenirs project, which we have in the ministry as a project. The aim of that project is to involve the youth, women and other groups within the host communities. The ministry has also embarked on training local government authorities and grassroots private sector players within the host communities. We have had engagement with the stakeholders in all regions, all regions of Uganda, and emphasized the need for development and promotion of tourism with involvement of all stakeholders along the value chain and equipped the participants with the prerequisite skills to manage <coughs> and regulate the sector, as well as arm them with business skills and product development knowledge. Some of you know about the Rolex initiative project for youth, and it did benefit a section of the youth who were involved in the famous Rolex project. Despite the pandemic, COVID-19, tourists have been free to come to Uganda. The president was very clear on television in his address when he said that tourists, tourists are free to continue coming to Uganda. Tourism vehicles, tourist vehicles, and tourists were allowed to move, remember, during the lockdown. During the lockdown, vehicles could arrive, uh, tourists could arrive at Entebbe, be cleared, be picked by tourism uh, business vehicles, uh, tourism transport vehicles, take them to their hotels, observe standard operating procedures, move from Kampala to Mubende, to Fort Porto, to Queen Elizabeth National Park, or move from Kampala, Luero, Nakasongora, uh, Karuma, Machishon Falls National Park. Is it? So the tourists continued to come despite the lockdown. Uganda received funds from the European Union as a grant 
our budget about six billion dollars as a grant. Six million euro. This money was routed through Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank is not a commercial bank. We should always remember that. The Uganda Development Bank is not a commercial bank. It's a development bank. It deals with development issues, not commercial issues. So you cannot go there to borrow to pay fees, is it? You must go with a project which you want to fund. And that project must be within, if it is agriculture, if it is industrial, industrial, if it is tourism, those are the issues where you can go and negotiate with the Uganda Development Bank and they give you the money. Is it? So even when the six million euro was received by Uganda Development Bank, Uganda Development Bank had to develop modalities, is it? How this money can be accessed. I think that is what has been a difficulty, isn't it? How the tourism sector, Ugandans involved in the tourism sector field, isn't it? How they have to agree how they can access these funds. These discussions have been going on. Some, some farms, some um, uh, enterprises, some individuals, some businesses have received this money. Others are still negotiating so that they fulfill the conditions required by Uganda Development Bank. But as you know, I'm not a spokesman, is it? Of UDB, I'm just telling you what I know about the modalities to follow, is it? In order for you to access that money. The money is there. But certain modalities must be followed in order for you to access those funds. Like any other bank, banks are very, very technical. Banks are very, very technical. They fear to lose, isn't it? And therefore, they ask you to provide them with certain requirements which you must fulfill in order for you to access those funds. The limited budget. We are still struggling with the Minister of Finance to give us not all of the resources, not really, but to give us funds that can help us to operate as a tourism ministry in the tourism sector. But you know that there was a cut of all budgets, of ministries, because of the pandemic. You know that very well. And the cut was pro rata. Pro rata means across the board, isn't it? And therefore, the tourism ministry was also affected. So we were not spared. But we shall continue to engage the ministry so that they can defreeze, defreeze parts of our budget so that we can operate. If you cut the line for travel, if you cut the budget for promotion, if we reduce, consider, not really consider, but totally the budget on marketing, then you have killed tourism, isn't it? Yeah, I'm kidding. Because tourism is marketing, tourism is promotion. But we shall continue to negotiate, discuss until we create a rapprochement, is it? Until we create an understanding, is it? Between those who manage the funds and those who promote tourism for this country. We, we hope that we can find a line somewhere where we shall agree. The purpose of allowing tourists 
to visit Uganda during the lockdown was deliberate because we were losing a lot of money. And we said, the president said, we're fine, let the tourists come, but let them observe standard operating procedures. Let the tourist, tourist vehicles operate. Don't stop them at the roadblocks between districts. Let them continue. And a person can actually arrive at Entebbe and have what we call safe conduct, is it? Safe conduct from the airport to Kampala, to a hotel, to Karuma, to Machishon Falls. And when you arrive in the National Park, there is UWA, Uganda Wildlife Authority, staff there. They will guide you where to go, where you wanted to go, and you will get there safely, observe the SOPs, finish your trip, come back to Entebbe, and take off. Really. But of course, you should observe uh, the standard operating procedure. In my view, it's not really very difficult. Today, Ugandans can, can't they? Today, Ugandans, me and you, are free to go and visit our conservation areas. You are free. If we don't know, we can assist you at the ministry. We can assist you if you, if you don't know. Uh, but you are journalists. Journalists are very, very uh, proactive people. They, they know things. So you know how to visit. You know how to book. You know how to travel. You have been to so many places, but you are free. Ugandans are free under the Tulambli program, isn't it? To go and visit their country. So when I said that please enjoy your country, isn't it? And promote it. I was being deliberate. I was being deliberate. That really you can't be a journalist for 20 years and you have never been to Machishon Falls National Park. I, I cannot fathom that. I, can, I, cannot, I cannot fathom that. If, if you want us to do a program for you to visit, we can. But please, don't spend 20 years in journalism and you have never been to Queen Elizabeth National Park. Really, you are not a very successful one, is it? <coughs> Service direct, direct, directories have been produced for the promotion of domestic and regional tourism as a means to revive their industry and ensuring rural community products are consumed. We urge the people to comply with the established SOPs and guidance by the health authorities as vaccination continues. There is no doubt in my mind that we shall overcome the pandemic as long as we follow science and discipline. And all the doubting Thomases, is it? Should not bother to doubt anymore. You know my name is Tom. So, so the, the, the doubting Thomases about the, about the fact that the pandemic will be defeated should not bother anymore. Definitely the pandemic will be defeated. The World Tourism Day will be marked in compliance with the current protocols and will be a hybrid event with limited physical participation in line with the theme of the event. And the objectives of marking the day will be to reflect and create awareness on the importance of tourism to social economic development of Uganda, to highlight the important contribution of domestic tourism to economic development, to create awareness on the strategies taken by government to mitigate COVID pandemic and the opportunities that tourism presents 
for enterprise and job creation. In this respect, an e-conference will be organized to explore the theme on the 27th September 2021. During the month of September, which will begin today, a number of media engagements and digital activities have been lined up to further create awareness on the objectives of marking the day. The conference will cover key topical issues in line with this year's theme. These include equitability, tourism accessibility, financial accessibility, technology and innovations, and greening the tourism industry. I urge fellow Ugandans to actively participate in the debate of making tourism work for inclusive growth. Inclusive growth. Not exclusive growth, but inclusive growth. Visit attractions and engage in responsible tourism especially during this time of the pandemic. The sector is cognizant of the changing landscape of tourism, tourism growth and competitiveness, and will focus on product development and enhancing the quality of service as we prepare for better times ahead of us. The sector is aggressively marketing destination Uganda with a message of reassurance and readiness to receive foreign tourists when they are ready to travel. I thank you and urge you to enjoy your country, Uganda, and to promote it. I thank you for your attention.